we begin with breaking news this morning out of South Korea. It is a race against time as police say they believe passengers, most of them teenagers, students, may still be alive, trapped inside that sunken ferry. Amazingly, there is a plan to pump oxygen into the sunken ship in an attempt to keep survivors breathing until rescuers can reach them. Adding hope to the mission today, parents of some of those teenage passengers say they've received text messages from their children coming from inside the ship. One message from a son to his mother reads, there are a few people in the ship. We are not dead yet, so please send along this message. Can't see a thing, it's totally dark. There are a few men and women, women are screaming. A young girl wrote to calm her father, Dad, don't worry, I'm wearing a life vest and I'm with other girls. We're inside the ship, still in the hallway. The hallway is crowded with so many people. Another young man on the ship wrote to his mother to say, Mom, in case I won't get to tell you, I'm sending this. I love you. Oh, back on land, families of the nine confirmed dead are grieving while others are struggling for answers. One mother sobbing as she recalled how she encouraged her daughter to take that trip. My daughter said to me, Mom, I don't want to go there because I, I went there again, this time again. So I tell her, I think this, this travel will be very great experience for you, for your school days. So I'm very regret. I'm very regret to see that. Adding to the family's grief today, an unsettling report from a local news agency saying only one just one of the ship's 46 lifeboats had been deployed. There are pictures of the life, lifeboats. You can see them. They're still on the ferry. They're inside those white capsule looking things. Um, this is a crucial detail that, of course, may have cost many lives. CNN's Paula Hancock is live in Jindu, South Korea with more. Hello, Paula. Hello, Carol. Well, that's certainly going to be a crux of this investigation. Maritime Police saying that they're investigating why only one of those 46 lifeboats was actually deployed. Was it the fact that they couldn't be deployed, that they just simply weren't deployed? And another thing that they're looking into was there, in fact, as eyewitnesses and survivors say, a PA announcement on the tannoid in the ship saying, don't move, it is dangerous to move, don't move. There is an assumption that that could have claimed lives as well because people couldn't get to the deck and jump into the water where there were many ships, uh, official vessels and also local fishing vessels ready to pluck people out of the water. Beneath these frigid waters, nearly 300 people, mostly teenage students and their teachers, remain missing. The ship's captain with his head down telling police, I'm sorry, I'm at a loss for words. Overnight, three bodies were recovered from the sunken ferry bound for a resort island off the southwest coast of Korea. The miraculous rescue of a six-year-old girl was caught on tape. Her parents and brother were not found. <laughs> Grief-stricken family members gather at a harbour in Jindo, waiting into the night, desperate for any information. A mother's anguish, as she recalls, encouraging her daughter to take the trip. So I tell her, I think this, this trip will be a very great experience for you, for your school days. So I'm very regret. I'm very regret to see the death. Dramatic video of the first 24 hours of the frantic rescue shows passengers clinging to guardrails and being airlifted to safety. Most of the clues about what could have caused the ship to sink have come from eyewitnesses who report hearing a loud bang and feeling the ship beginning to tilt. It sounds like he hit a, um, a submerged object which uh, caused the uh, a gash in the hull which would allow a lot of ingress of water. If that's the case, the gash apparently was large enough to impact several compartments below and ultimately capsize the ship. Also in question, the handling of the evacuation. According to passengers, they were initially told to stay on board. This cell phone video, thought to be from inside the ship, shows passengers all wearing life jackets. Outside the ship, only one of 46 lifeboats deployed. <laughs> These instructions heard from the crew saying, do not move. If you move, it's more dangerous. Do not move. Could have cost many lives. One of the ways relatives found out about their loved ones was through text messages. 
There are a few people in the ship and we are not dead yet, so please send along this message. Another student texted his friends. I think we are all going to die. If I did anything wrong to you, please forgive me. I love you all. Now the rescue operation has been severely hampered this Thursday by adverse weather conditions, very poor visibility underwater. We know that divers at least six times tried to get inside some of the cabins that are submerged, but they failed each time. There has been a very strong underwater currents as well, a very dangerous a situation for these divers. On a number of occasions, they've had to suspend the diving, and, uh, and of course it is uh, pitch black now, a second night for these families to be sitting at the side of the water just waiting. Carol. That's right. So hundreds are still missing. Frigid waters. Um, you mentioned that the captain said he was sorry, so I would assume the captain got off that ship and survived. You also said one lifeboat was deployed. Do we know how the captain managed to stay alive? Well, that is the question. The captain is safe. We know that one lifeboat uh, was deployed. And of course, uh, the captain is, uh, is with officials at this point. He is the crux of this investigation. We have seen him on local news television. Uh, he has been bowing his head. He's been hiding his face with his baseball cap saying, I'm sorry, there are no words. I have no words. But the fact is, he made it off the uh, ship safely. Uh, almost 300 people are still unaccounted for. This is making families very angry. They want to know exactly what happened and what part he played in it. Well, well exactly, because um, that picture showed many of these students had life jackets on, so but somebody came out and instructed them to do something, but, but apparently no one put any lifeboats in the water. That's just disturbing. Well, that's the thing, and they don't know whether or not it was a case that they couldn't get the lifeboats into the water, whether or not it was a case that the ship uh, simply sank too quickly that they were unable to, whether they misjudged the situation, uh, and whether they just didn't know uh, how quickly the ship was going to sink. It, they just simply don't know at this point. This is what they're investigating. But, of course, the fact that the captain managed uh, to get off the ship when almost 300 people are still unaccounted for uh, is going to be a very crucial part of this investigation. At what point did he leave the ship? And and uh, was he in charge of the ship at the time uh, that it, uh, it did start uh, to sink and start to tilt and uh, carried out that distress signal? And uh, I know that they're trying to pump oxygen into this sunken ship, hoping that somebody, you know, underneath the water is still alive. Um, any word on how that's working? Well, they haven't given us too many details about that. They're basically saying that they, as you say, are pumping oxygen in. They're working under the assumption uh, that there are still survivors. Uh, they're working under the assumption that there may be air pockets, as there are. Uh, there is at least one part of the ship that is still poking out of the water. It's a small part of the ship, but they're working under the assumption there may be survivors. And that's why they're doing that. So they're not giving us much technical information about this. We know within the coming hours we'll have three cranes coming down uh, to this area where hoping within the next eight or nine hours. That's at least what the Maritime Police have told us. Uh, but it's still not clear whether or not they'll be trying to pull the uh, ship further out of the water to get better access or whether they'll be towing it towards the coast. We've heard reports uh, on both counts. They're not being too specific on those details at this point. Carol? Paula Hancock's reporting live from South Korea this morning. For 41 days, the